Okay, so that should do it. And so let's save it. Boom. And then let's go to the balance sheet and see what happens. Que paso. Que paso. We're going to go down to the prepaid insurance has now moved down to 11,000. That makes sense because now if one month has passed, there was 12,000 for 12 months divided by 12, 1,000 a month. 11 months have not yet expired. Therefore, 1,000 times 11 is 11,000. That's how much of the insurance policy uh, value that we're still gonna be consuming in the future. If I go into this, that takes us to our journal report. Doesn't take us back to the register. It takes us to the good old journal entry. I'm gonna copy the adjusting entry down here too. So we have it on both lines. Save it and close it. There we go. And then the other side, back to the balance sheet is on the income statement. Let's run it to refresh it. And then down here, we have now our expense has been allocated. I would assume, there it is, insurance liability, $1,000 insurance has been allocated. So there we have that. So that looks good. And so just remember that you, you wanna make sure whatever system you're using, you're in conjunction with like the CPA or accountant. What you don't want to have happen, for example, is you're on a is you have a you have a, a schedule c business for example and you record your information as prepaid insurance thinking that your accountant is going to make the adjusting entries at the end of the period and then they don't right they just take your income statement and plug it into the into the tax return without doing any any other kind of thought process involved right if because what you want what you want to do is if you're is working with a, an accountant when you have a business oftentimes that's gonna help you possibly to do those period end adjusting entries, double check things like the payroll and possibly help you with the adjusting entries for any kind of prepayment accounts, especially like insurance and see what's gonna be relevant on a tax return uh, type of situation rather than just you know taking, just taking the income statement and whatever you give them and plug it in to the system. If you're working with someone that's just taking the income statement and plug it into the system, then you gotta make sure that you're doing the periodic adjustments at the end of the period and you still might use the same system you just want to make sure that whatever system you're using and whoever you're working with to do that system and implement it everybody has is is in the loop on what needs to be done okay so let's open up our reports right click duplicate our tab over here and we've got our journal reports let's take a look at those first scrolling down reports on the left closing the hand boogie type it in journal the journal and let's go from 022823 to 022823 and then i'm just going to search for the journal entries by customize and filters and transaction type we want the journal entry run it so there we have it so th these are the adjusting entries we've done thus far this is the one we just did here these two are not adjusting entries we would have to delete them we'll, we'll maybe we'll do that and show you how to do that at the at the end by just exporting it to excel possibly and removing them uh in excel and then if i take this up one notch there's where we we are with the reversing entries note that the entry we just did here is not a reversing entry. It's a it's a permanent kind of process. So it's not something that we're going to say, hey, the, the accounting department is doing their thing, but we need to make a temporary adjustment. It's a planned adjustment, which is a permanent adjustment as opposed to uh, a temporary adjustment. So next year we'll have to do the next one allocating the, the expenses uh, as time passes. So that's the other thing we got to keep in mind which of the of the entries that we're putting in place are reversing entries and which of the entries are permanent and this happens to be a permanent one